And also a state of the island address is tonight, the salt tea, if you will. Um, good morning, guys. 716 here on the link. Get your popcorn ready for tonight, guys. The big show as the governor uh, prepares to deliver her state of the island address. It's been about a year since the last one, because it happens every year. Um, and I remember the last one, uh, Bree was. Oh, man. That was the one where she was like, we beat dengue, right? Yeah. And then there was, I think there was just a little piece about something with COVID, and then COVID happened, and here we are, uh, almost a year later. Uh, 716, the one-year anniversary of uh, coronavirus, Jay? Is a week from today. Okay, and that is on March 15th. 15th, there you go. But when, the fir- when the first three cases were announced by the governor. Yep, uh, let's just say it's been a whirlwind of a ride, but someone who's been buckled up and with us, just about every step of the way, Dr. Ho Wen of the Physicians Advisory Group. Good morning, Doc. Uh, unmute. I was gonna say, Do- yes, Dr. Nguyen, yes. Dr. Nguyen was <laughs> was not the uh, was not the doctor that everybody was talking about <laughs> for once. Yeah, this weekend. <laughs> this weekend. Well, Doc, uh, I gotta give morning, you credit. Guys. Good morning, because he has made it through the whole pandemic without like locking horns with anybody, without you know what I mean. He just kind of goes about his way, being professional, and we appreciate it, Doc. You don't have enough drama, Doc, you know? <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. <laughs> did you did you sign uh, on to the letter of complaint, though, to the Guam Board of Medical Examiners? Uh, no, no, uh, no, Sabrina. No, I didn't, didn't sign it, no. Okay. Do you know who did? Uh, I think, I think um, that situation needs to kind of go away and... Uh, Everyone got to stop talking about it. It's, um, you know, we, we go now for one year on this pandemic and we are doing very well. And we just need everyone to work together to get us to the next stage to open our economy. Uh, so we just need um, you know, both the physician to kind of keep the comment for themselves. And I think that's the best way for our community to go forward. Yeah, Doc, you know, I was uh, talking over the weekend, and there there used to be a time when it was like politics and religion were just the two things that, you know, uh, you you remember that, Bree, when it'd be like, hey, don't talk about politics, don't talk about religion, if you're like in a gathering or whatever, uh, because people just get too hot about it, and uh, that's something we've seen during the pandemic, and more recently, even before the pandemic, is now everyone feels like they have to announce their politics and their religion just out to everybody and you know uh but you know it's entertaining though doc you gotta admit did you watch the <laughs> interviews or what i watched both of them yes <laughs> what was uh, better what was okay but uh team shay are you team uh, shay or team uh cabrera i i think none of them um <laughs> i think the i think the message we had to pass across to people and and uh. we pass this message as on day one is that if you are feeling sick, you know, you need to stay at home. And that's what respect to other people around you and respect your co-worker and respect, you know, your family. So I think that masters need to to um, come back out again and not lost in the shuffle. Is that, you know, I ask everyone that um, if you feel sick, uh, even cough and cold, you know, just stay home. Uh, and that's the best way for us to go forward. We are doing very well on this pandemic at this point and we would like to continue to do better uh so that that main message about you know respect each other and we're sick stay home they need to still be out there even if we have our vaccination program going forward we still need to abide by that that guideline so um that's the message you go across and and, and i hope it's not lost uh, on uh, on this um on this fight here but again you know well um, we ask both of them to work together, and, and hopefully uh, no, we can continue to work together uh, to get us better. Okay? Okay, guys, Dr. Hoa said work together. Get, get your act together, Dr. Cabrera and Dr. Shea. You do not want to get on Dr. Hoa's. This guy doesn't ever get mad, okay? So <laughs> you don't want to see him <laughs> mad, okay? Because that's when all the guard, you know, killer assassins, School of America's Special Forces <laughs> stuff is going to come out. 
Um, Doc, so what's going on? Did you guys get your vaccines? Because I know there was a we we're out for a little bit there, and then the everyone was checking the mail. It finally came in what Friday? Yeah, Thursday. Moderna came in Friday. Mm -hmm. I think the Pfizer also come in. So I think this morning is the first vaccination uh, clinic open again at UOG uh, from Monday to Saturday, and they're going to we'll try to uh, do some catch up for that eight thousand people in that behind. But again, I sure people in that you know a week or two behind. Uh, it's not going to hurt you, and they will do the catch up and, and prioritize the number two um, vaccine this um, this week. So by next week, hopefully, we should be all caught up right and start back at number one. And again, uh, as Dr. Win say, Win said that we, we can't stress it enough that the UOG Calvo Fieldhouse, the National Guard's vaccination clinics. Uh, they start back up today, starting at is it 10, I believe. And this is yes. only for second, those people that are due for the second dose. They're not going to be administering uh, first doses of either uh, vaccine. So please just keep that in mind. Don't just head over there. It's only for those due for the second dose. Yes. Uh, even if you have the second dose, and I know the, the appointment is fully booked, you know, if you need the second dose, you know, um, I would just say that... Um, if you just try to walk in and they they will try their best to accommodate you um, but you know just some um, again um if a lot of people walk in there be some people will be turned away just because of the capacity so you know just be patient uh everyone try to get to you uh, to complete your series so just be patient with them and um again by next week we should be all caught up right number two so uh, it does, doesn't hurt to be um, late for a few days, so uh, don't worry. Okay. Doc, Doc, is this the same protocol for all the the private clinics? That it's also this week. All the private clinics are only giving second dose. Uh, yes. I mean that that's the the protocol, and and okay. the, our recommendation for the private clinic is try to accommodate all the second dose as possible. Um, you know, just to help out the UOG uh, vaccination clinic. So. Uh, if your patient call, if you have time, uh, try to fit them in and try to do um, the help, the, um, the the catch up here because I think we all have to again work together with the uh, UOG and um, try to absorb um, some of the the patient that need the second dose. So the, the instruction come out on the clinic is, is um, for this week um, number two. You know uh, again the, every. The, Clinic have a list of patients that's waiting for number two, so they should come down that list and start calling the patient. Um, you know, in rare case, it's going to be some number one going to slip in there just because we, if you want to open the the valve, you can't waste them. So, um, um, if, but the best way is to try to call on the number two to come in to get their shot this week. Doc, what? I know it's the uh, vaccination uh, clinic or council's uh, call, but. Have you heard anything? Because we had a comment here about retailers, gas station attendants, mm -hmm. uh, cashiers who are very uh, interact and are exposed to the public a lot. Do you know when they're going to be getting their their vaccination? Yeah, you know those in next phase. You know they um, they're going to come. Their turn will come up uh, again. The hotel row uh, and um, and the bus driver and everyone else will have their turn also. Just because. Um, we try to open our economy in May, uh, by the end of May, as the governor order. So, uh, those some um, industry that have uh, potential have a, a, a direct, uh, you know, um, face to face interact with the tourists or anyone that come into our island, uh, they should be prioritized. And that's the only way that we can go forward to as a second phase to open our economy. So. Uh, those are coming up soon, but we again this week will be all number two to try to prioritize everyone. Mm -hmm. For clarification, again, for people that got their first dose at some of the village uh, vaccinations, um, maybe even homebound, um, can they go to the UOG uh, Cavill Field House, or should they just wait? No, that all everyone in Guam that get the first dose anywhere. I can okay. go to UOG fuel house to get the second dose. Um, yeah, this is where the, everything is concentrated on on one major place. Uh, again, so if you get your shot uh, anywhere in Guam, uh, at Okudu or anywhere, you can go to UOG fuel house and get the second dose. Mm -hmm. And you know, again, um, 
the, the clinic will help uh, will chip in and help out too uh, to to get the vaccine. We I know that uh, for AMC we vaccinate quite a bit of uh, number the second dose uh, that people get the first dose somewhere else. So um, again, the clinic is another uh, way for them to get the second dose. But but you know call and make sure that they have the availability of the vaccine as number one, and also they have um, the um, open schedule to accommodate the, the patient also. So um, so you can try. Um, on um, every clinic uh, at UOG, it doesn't matter when you get your first shot, you will get the first, the second shot anywhere you're going to try. Okay. Uh, you, you mentioned something about reopening the economy in May, um, but last we heard from uh, GBB was uh, that they were looking at the reopening of tourism for April 1. Has that, is that still the plan or is it now May? I think that the governor said the end of May, but you know, uh, once you announce the opening, uh, the end of May, it, it, it have, you have to give the tourist industry time to organize everything around it. You know, the flight has to be planned, you know, the hotel, the package, everything. So you might say the end of May, but it's going to take those guys the, the few weeks to a few months for them to put the package, everything together, you know, just, um, Especially, uh, especially as United, you know, they have to have um, several weeks or months to plan out the flight. So, uh, even we announce open in, in the end of May, uh, it's going to be a little while for for the tourists to come in. So, everything has to be organized. The reason they that they um, um, announce that so everyone can plan on on those dates. Uh, we had a comment here from Bevtest J. Solis. Could the public make appointment at AMC for vaccination, or is it only established patients with the clinic? No, the public can. Uh, when they call, uh, again, depending on each clinic for our clinic, though, you know, when you call, they put you on the waiting list. And, and trust me, the, the, that waiting list go very quick, okay? So when you when you on the waiting list already, uh, you'll be calling the next few days to come in to get their shot. As long as we are aware that, that you, know, you are on that list, we will get you in. So when you call, you know, um, they will put in the waiting list, uh, and then we, we go down to the waiting list and start giving shots, okay? Mm -hmm. So you don't have to be an AMC patient. It can be anyone. Like I say, any clinic uh, should try their best to, to accommodate uh, the people that call in uh, for whichever way that you can do it, but they, they should be able to accommodate and and uh, those people to get their shot uh, in. The faster we do it, uh, the, the better it is, and the, our percentage um, coming up in the, uh, the number of people that uh, are vaccinated in Guam, I think the, the, the one is that we are shooting for 50% uh, for us to be uh, comfortable and open up the, our tourism, and hopefully we can get rid of the Q factor once we get to that 50%. Let's talk about that, though. Any changes uh, anticipated for quarantine? Um, for right now, I think um, we hover, I forgot what percentage we are, but we have a, a different um, uh, approach, you know, from 30%, uh, 50%, and at, at every uh, milestone that we reach, uh, we, we will change the, uh, the quarantine factor. Again, it depends on the positivity rate in the state and also um, the number percentage of um, um, completion of the vaccine in Guam. So, um, so there's two factors we look at in order to change the quarantine guidelines. So uh, again, um, the faster we do it, the better it is. And, um, and um, the lower the rate for positive in the, in the state, the, the better it is. So uh, again, most of the positive now is coming in from the Q factor. So that's something that we we have to look for. Any uh, word on the variant? Um, you know, we sent out three specimens, um, so three times, but we have not, I understand we don't have anything back from CDC yet to, to, for those um, three, you know, um, I think we have three shipments and none of them come back um, yet to see we have variants or not. So we have no result from that. Are people still talking about the variant out there, Doc? You know, it's kind of strange. You know, we they talk about the range in the state, but it's um, strange the the positive rate in the state some sometimes drop to 40, 50 percent. So uh, we're not quite sure what's going on there. But um, 
again, um, probably by the end of March, uh, we would know if those variants uh, really affect uh, our, um, uh, our infection rate or not. Doc, have you... Uh, a, lot of, a lot of states are open up their, uh, their, their, their economy and, um, you know, they remove their uh, face mask requirement um, as a mandate and they open everything 100%. So uh, curious to see how the next two or three weeks, see how they do. And if the positive rates continue to go down, then then uh, in the state, and when that's good for us. You know, we have to look our guidelines, ease off on that. Mm -hmm. Um, Doc, have you heard anything uh, about um, the QFAC and the isolation facilities? Because, you know, we owe over $20 million, and that's only within a five-month time frame from October to March 1. So it's $20 million it's owed. The ISOFAC facility at the Bayview, um, I, I want to say there are seven, eight people there, um, and we're paying $175 per room when it's occupied, $90 unoccupied is there any talk about we're gonna get a smaller facility or or what yeah those um uh, i don't know uh, who negotiate those i don't have the privilege of knowing uh, how to <laughs> uh, uh, the i guess the contract was made that one i, I know they serve us uh, um, a very um uh good um and uh, that they serve the purpose for us. Um, but uh, regarding, you know, the contract, uh, I'm not sure uh, about the contracts. So I really can't comment on that. But they do serve a purpose for us regarding keep our island safe and also um, to uh, to give people an option to stay in the isolation facility if their home are not um, um, safe for them to stay in and so they they do serve the purpose um regarding the payment you know i i don't know it's it's quite expensive um so that's why we try our best to get out of that as soon as possible mm -hmm. that we feel safe for the people to come back to our, our island and be able to quarantine at home so we work the best in the medical side to mm -hmm. try to get our island ready uh, once they decide to change the, the guideline. Mm -hmm. But you're not involved with the contract. Just for the record, Dr. Hoa Wentz is not involved, yeah. nothing to do with it. Yeah. It's expensive. Yeah, I, I just wondered no, if, no, if no. you heard any discussions yeah. about moving it out of uh, this facility. I think um, the, the facility had to be somehow, you know, um, met certain standard um, for uh, people to stay there. Uh, mm -hmm. I know there's some questionable uh, standards um, for the hotel there, but uh, again, there's um, I think there's public health uh, need to uh, to work along the hotel to make sure that it's um, sanitary for our people to stay. Uh, again, you know, I, um, the cost in the contract um, is not on my lane, and and our yeah. lane is, is strictly the medical side to make sure that that our island's doing well. Right. Um, and just to go back on uh, economic recovery, uh, the GVB vice president, uh, he was at the Rotary uh, Club about a week and a half ago, and he was also on this show prior to that talking about the, the restart of tourism on Guam. But there was one thing that he did, and he called kind of called out public health, and that was about um, the current health and safety policy uh, being one-dimensional and an impediment to the pace of recovery. And he said that we need to start meeting. We need to start having discussions and come up with this um, risk proportionate policy. And I'm just wondering if, if the physician's advisory group has been folded into the, this discussion to come up with this policy and this plan as we prepare. Because, you know, I'm still going off of what Jerry Perez said and, and GVB, uh, Carl Gutierrez, that the, the target date is the 1st of April. And even if it's one May, it's it's still you know two months away. And is there any risk proportionate policy that GVB is uh, requesting? Uh, you know, the PAC will always um, there to uh, to help um, uh, in in this uh, second, I guess, this phase to open up our economy. We're always going to be there if uh, we ask by the governor to. Uh, to, uh, to step in to give uh, work along public health and GBB and GSRA to do that. You know, um, 
I, I know that public health are pretty much tied up in a lot of stuff, but um, again, I agree they you know, they just need to uh, set aside um, certain key people to work with GVB on this um, and GSRA for this um, um, uh, this phase of open up a, a, a economy. So I think that they, they should set someone aside and that's all they're gonna do is basically work with GVB, GSRA, because right now the, their plate are really, really full. So, um, but it's very important for us to go forward because uh, 2021 uh, seem to be better um, if if we do correctly. So yeah, I would uh, you know, ask public health to, um, to really set you know, um, a, a team Together, and that's all they concentrate on is working with public, working with uh, GVB for this, and, and not to have multitasking. But that's you're not going to accomplish anything. Are you saying that there's no team in place to to to, to have these discussions with the Guam Visitors Bureau? I think there's team in place, but uh, they also that's not the sole task. The sole task is to do a lot of other stuff, including immunization, including testing. Uh, and other uh, tasks that the, the public health have. So, yeah, there's some. Um, uh, I think they should have a team that's all they do is working GVB and not uh, nothing else involved because this is a, a huge task um, on our island. Yeah, yeah, I, and I understand. Yeah, that is a huge task, and yeah. you know, it's kind of concerning that if we're planning to uh, reopen on April first. Or yeah. I'm surprised there isn't like a task force, like a governor's council on reopening the island executive yeah. task force. Yeah. Maybe there is, and, and we just don't know. Right? Maybe so it's going to yeah. be announced tonight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hope. Uh, again, I think we are doing much, much better uh, in 2021 to start with. So uh, there's a lot of vaccine coming in. There's uh, more in number every month. So we should be able to, to get where we are and, and really open up uh, very, very soon. So, you know, things change a lot, guys, and this week and next week might be totally different. So um, hopefully it go to a positive side, and that's how we look at it. Thank you, Doc. Appreciate it. Appreciate You're you. You're welcome. Okay, be safe. You Thank too, Doc. You be safe, Dr. Holwin. <laughs> right on. Take there care. you go. <laughs> uh, 7.39. Uh, so basically, Dr. Ho is saying, quarantine, uh, not involved with that. That's expensive. Um, hmm. yeah. uh, he also talked about, yeah, there should be some kind of uh, council or body that works with 